And joining us live this morning, now from our New Bedford studios, is a man who knows more than a little about that hurricane of 1938. Writer Everett Allen was beginning his first day of work at the New Bedford Standard Times newspaper on this very morning, 50 years ago. Mr. Allen, welcome and thank you for joining us here at First News. Pleasure. You wrote about your experiences uh, during the hurricane and those of others in your book, A Wind to Shake the World. Now, we have some pictures taken from the book, and if we can just take a look at them now, could you describe to us what's going on in, in some of these different scenes? Yes, that, uh, that is uh, Hartford. And um, at Hartford, more than a thousand WPA workers, World War I veterans, college students, and other volunteers worked all night long to build sandbag dikes to keep out the Connecticut River, which crested at 35.1 feet. And uh, I think that finally the crest came, uh, the water was just about two inches below the man-made barrier, and this extraordinary effort uh, protected three square miles of the city from which 3,000 people had been evacuated. That looks to me as if it might be uh, New London. Of course, in New London, uh, short-circuited wires caused by storm flooding started a blaze in the waterfront section. That was the worst fire that the city had had since the British under Benedict Arnold burned the place in 1781. And the blocked roads, the um, uh, trees down, and fallen wires prevented outside help from coming. The New London firemen uh, were in water up to their waists in many instances. The uh, water from the hose nozzles blew back into their faces, but New Londoners fought and saved uh, their city by themselves. What about these car scenes? Was this common? About the cars? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, of, uh, it was, certainly. Uh, there were all kinds of uh, cars underwater. As a matter of fact, um, a total of 26,000 automobiles were destroyed by that storm. Incidentally, uh, the money figures kind of, that's the schooner Lizzie. She was at um, Frank Tabor's schooner, beautiful schooner yacht, and that's just east of the um, New Bedford Yacht Club uh, at the New Bedford Fairhaven Bridge. Just incredible scenes of destruction all throughout our area. The, um, yeah, one of the things, uh, this is New Bedford Harbor, and that reminds me, for example, that uh, Arthur Small's wife, Mabel, uh, he had been a lighthouse keeper on Palmer's Island for 19 years, and uh, his wife uh, gave her life in his behalf, and uh, they are going to be honored this evening, as a matter of fact, with um, a plaque which will be uh, placed near the hurricane barrier. And uh, in due course after that, uh, the townspeople will be going to the middle school in Fairhaven for uh, a premiere, a video, video premiere of my book, uh, When to Shake the World, which incidentally uh, was a uh, bestseller in 76. It's been in print ever since. I think this shows continuing interest in uh, the book, in the hurricane, and a special hurricane edition has been put out by Little Brown uh, just within the last, last month. Everett Allen. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and filling us in on some of that. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Wish we had more time to talk with him. Thank and our look at the hurricane of 38 continues tomorrow as John Giorsi takes us to Westerly, Rhode Island. The beaches of Naptree Point, Watch Hill, and Mesquamacut were among the hardest hit by the hurricane. And we'll talk with survivors who say they could never forget what happened 50 years ago. John Giorsi will be back again to tell us what's in store for us this time. A little more calm at this point. Small was the lighthouse keeper. He was swept into the water by the storm and his wife in an attempt to save him was drowned and lost her life. But Captain Small stayed at his post all night despite seeing his wife killed, kept the lighthouse burning and kept the foghorn blowing for the safety of any mariners that might have been at sea. Now we're looking at photos from a book by Everett Allen a book called The Wind That Shook the World. And Everett Allen is standing by with me now. Where were you when the storm hit, Mr. Allen? Well, at approximately the time when it struck, I was up here at the bridge, which is just north of Palmer's Island. And the first thing that I remember was uh, the intensity of the rain, for example. I think the rain was coming. The, the weather was horizontal, if you will. It was almost impossible to look into it. The rain came like silver bullets. Do you think people appreciate the effects of the storm now? Oh, I'm sure they do, at least anyone uh, who was um, able to experience it at that time. Okay, uh, Mr. Allen, yes. we have to go now. But uh, there will be further ceremonies in Fairhaven tonight. Back to you, Dave and Ann. Hmm. Some of those pictures look like uh, pretend toys. Yeah. It's interesting. I'd never seen the film before. I've seen some of the stills, so it's interesting to see the actual rolling pictures. Very, very devastating, as many of you have seen. This is Pat Masters. The hurricane barrier is only one of the ways in which the New Bedford Fairhaven Harbor looks drastically different than it did before September 21st, 50 years ago. 
And now, on a day called Hurricane Preparedness Day, a wreath was tossed into the harbor, commemorating the 69 lives lost in these parts to the great hurricane. Nearby, the equipment used in disaster relief was showcased for the public. But a key component of the evening's commemoration was the showing of a documentary on the hurricane. It drew nearly a thousand people here to the Hastings Middle School. It is a video film version of A Wind to Shake the World, the story of the 1938 hurricane, a tale written by journalist and hurricane survivor Everett Allen, researched and produced on video by cable television director and hurricane buff Mark Barron. The bottom line is that this program is to increase awareness of hurricane preparedness if we do get a warning along the coast. It was catastrophic. It was awful because, among other things, you realize that nothing nature made, man made, or made by anybody else necessarily needs to be permanent. Uh, I think what the hurricane proved was that landmarks do not, in fact, have to exist. Nothing that you knew yesterday has to exist simply because it existed yesterday and may not be there at all tomorrow. Pat Masters, News Watch 10, Fairhaven. Copies of the hurricane video shown in Fairhaven tonight and may be viewed at libraries and schools in the area. They may also be purchased with proceeds going to the town.